Hello and welcome to Scale Stuff. In this week's video, I'm going to be taking a post-build look at the Tamiya 135th scale Universal Carrier Mark II. As always, before I get into the kit, I'm going to start with a little bit of history. The Universal Carrier is an often underestimated armoured vehicle of World War II. British designed, its origins come from the Carden Lloyd tankettes of the 1920s and 30s. The Universal Carrier was used as a battlefield support vehicle and was used for literally everything. Scouting, dismounting infantry, carrying equipment, towing guns and evacuating wounded were all roles played by this little vehicle. As far as armour goes, it was the General Dog's Body, Jack of All Trades, tankette tagging alongside the British Army during the uh, Second World War, and it served with them from the start to the finish. Hundreds of thousands of these were made, and um, it can count itself as the most built armoured vehicle in history. Now, onto the model. This kit was released in 1976 and reboxed with new parts in 1994, so the kit's got a bit of age to it. And you can tell looking at the sprues in this kit. There's nothing majorly wrong with them, but quite a lot of mould lines and injection ports will need to be cleaned up as you go. Nothing too hard to do though. A lot of the injection pin marks end up really well tucked away, other than a couple inside the front plate and a couple inside the rear compartment wall that uh, will need a careful light sand to uh, sort them out. As always, I checked around on the internet to see if there are any inaccuracies in the kit. And uh, overall, it seems the kit's pretty accurate, but feel free to correct me if you think I'm wrong on that. A few inaccuracies I did spot, though, was the uh, rubber band tracks. They don't have enough links. The real carriers had nearly double the runs on them. Uh, however, I, I can look past this personally. Uh, another little thing I noticed was the Bren guns are pretty chunky uh, compared to the more scale modern versions. But again, I can live with this. It's a mark of the times, I suppose. As with all Tamiya models I've uh, looked at so far, the build's pretty simple and straightforward, but there are a few bits to watch out for as you build this little carrier. First bit to take note of is, straight off, in step one, the gear stick. Later on in the build, the kit asks you to paint and glue the figure in before adding the sides. Now, I don't know about you, but I like to paint my figures at the end, once the main model's done. And um, if you try and do this, the gear stick will stop you from being able to fit the figure in later on without uh, you breaking the gear stick off. Fortunately, I spotted this early on and totally didn't just force the figure in later and re-glue the stick. So uh, yeah, if you uh, want to paint and add the figure later, leave the gear stick off. The gear stick can then be fitted fairly easy right at the end of the build uh, if you uh, have a set of tweezers. Another bit to watch out for is uh, fitting the central engine cover. This is uh, in the later part of step four of the build, and uh, this bit's a bit tricky. Uh, a few dry runs and a careful use of glue at this stage is needed. Um, I found after some faff, the uh, part suddenly clicked into place like it was always meant to be there. Um, I also found that this step was the best time to start painting the internals. Uh, being an open top model from this point onwards, uh, it's a good idea to paint everything as you go, especially the rear exhaust area. I glued the back panel on over the uh, details here without pre-painting and uh, had quite a lot of trouble getting into this uh, little nook to uh, paint it later on. As per usual, as with all track vehicles, uh, the tracks are easier to paint before they're added later on and the front wheel should be left off to aid in fitting the tracks later. But the uh, track can still be fitted if you choose to glue them on with a little bit of patience and a pointy thing. This kit comes with tons of extra little details and weapons, which I think is one of the uh, strong points of this kit. But again, like all the other stuff, uh, these will be much easier to paint before gluing them into the model. This kit comes with five figures, two of which are from the earlier 1976 release of the kit, wearing North African uniforms of shorts and shirts. And uh, three are from when this kit was re-released in 1994. These are wearing the European uniform. It's interesting to have figures cast 20 years apart in the same box. I mean, look at the difference. The uh, later figures in the European theatre uniforms are nice moulds, not as good as the newer Tamiya figures, but still nice casting, good expressions on each figure, and uh, natural poses. The uh, older desert figures, though, uh, really show their age. I mean, look at this guy compared to the more modern ones. This chap's a bloody beast. Thicker set than their... Uh, Modern comrades, he looks about 132nd scale to me. I wouldn't want to meet him in a dark alley. The um, older models, um, they have that classic 70s kit figure look to them. Uh, still not bad detail compared to other figures of the time frame. And I'm sure I'll find a use for them, but 
yeah, not a scratch on the uh, more modern ones. Uh, going back to the more modern figures, though, uh, it's nice to have some casual pose figures in the carrier, and uh, I think they really uh, complete the look of the kit. Though, uh, if you're looking for more action poses, you'd want to go for getting the 2001 version of this kit, as they're all driving and manning the guns. Decals-wise, the kit comes with markings to make five versions of the model. Um, the paint guide in this kit's pretty rough, though. It just tells you where the markings go. And that European theatre of uh, action carriers were olive drab and African front carriers were tan coloured. And that various camos were applied in various colours. Um, it doesn't give you any more details than this though. So the regiment decals will need to be researched if you're after an accurate individual vehicle build. If not though, pick what you uh, like the look of and enjoy. The regiment markings included in this kit are from the British 3rd, 78th and 50th Infantry Divisions, the Canadian 3rd Infantry Division and the 1st Armoured Division. These groups cover most of the bases of World War II and will allow a lot of scope for various paint schemes. I went for the 78th Division as I like the jagged camo stripe pattern shown on the uh, box art on the sides. Conclusion the Tamiya 135th scale Universal Carrier Mark II is a nice kit. For its small size, it's a very involved model though, and it needs lots and lots of pre-painting as you go to get into all the small details, which personally, I really enjoyed. The model is quite old though, and parts will need cleaning up as you go, but um, there's nothing out of the normal there for a kit of this age. The painting and decal guide in this kit really doesn't hold your hand, which might be a bit off-putting for some, but I like the fact that it includes markings from a wide range of units, and with a little bit of research, is pretty much a license to paint whatever you fancy at this point. For the £15 I paid for this model, I think that despite its small size, it was well worth the money, as it comes with a lot of details and can be built into a broad range of vehicles. Anyway, that's my review of the 135th scale Tamiya Universal Carrier Mark II. As always, thank you for watching and I hope you found this video helpful if you're planning on building one of these yourself. Until next time though, look after yourself and have a good one. Goodbye.